Okay. Moving on to uh, Africa this week. So last week we covered Latin America. This week we'll be covering Africa. Now, obviously, the development of an entire continent, uh, you know, we can't really cover in a week. Um, and just like last, kind of last week, I'm just going to focus in on a few papers. Um, so with Latin America, I focus in on Ingerman and Sokolov. Next week, uh, when we talk about the Middle East, I'm going to focus in on Jared Rubin's work. This week, um, uh, we're going we're gonna to look at Nathan Nunn's very, very famous paper on the long run effects of the slave trade. And then this Michaelopoulos and Pampanuo, I don't know, two Greek guys, not sure how to say their name, um, on, uh, on the effect of borders. And also we're going to talk a little bit about Botswana. Um, so again, it's like obviously the experience, uh, the development experience is very complex. Um, again, I'm just highlighting kind of two phenomenon and then doing a case study of, uh, of Botswana. All right. So the slave trade. We have essentially four different uh, slave trades coming out of Africa, Trans-Saharan, the Red Sea, and the Indian Ocean. Uh, you may have seen this graph in other places. Um, but, you know, essentially, it is showing you the thicker the era, er, the, thick of the thicker the arrow, the more slaves um, that are taken. And this is kind of their locations. So we have, you know, slaves being moved into the Middle East, uh, slaves being moved here into northern uh, Africa. And then we have the, the slave trade that I think we're most familiar with, which is the transatlantic. Um, slaves being moved to the New World. Now, as, um, you know, as citizens of the U.S., or most of us are in the U.S., we're obviously most familiar with slavery in the U.S. But if you look at it, it's quite interesting. Many more slaves went to the Caribbean and uh, Brazil in terms of absolute uh, numbers. So slavery is prevalent throughout, uh, throughout the continent, uh, th these continents. Okay, so it's the largest, hence probably it's, it's, it's the largest and has the uh, longest legacies, 12 million, uh, about 6 million in the other trades. This number also doesn't include Africans who died in slave raids. And the estimate is by 1850, essentially the population of Africa is half of what had been predicted without um, these slave trades. Okay, now this is going to be important. This is, you know, this, this one often is, uh, is a bit complex. Um, but it's going to be important when we, when we consider the effects of the slave trade. So when none, none is essentially going to look at what was the effect of these slave trades, the long run effect. Um, as you, as you could, surmise is going to have a negative effect uh, on the long run growth, growth of these areas, but why? Um, and so it's important to kind of understand the character of the slave trade in order to figure out what is the long run effect. So essentially there are raids, um, you know, raids of villages in here, raids of neighboring villages um, to take slaves and then sell them to uh, European uh, slave uh, traders. And so what none is positing is this will create fragmentation within ethnic groups. It will lead to kind of this environment of mistrust and uncertainty. It will overturn complex political states. And there will often even be uh, enslavement of members of their own villages, will, which will feed back into this mistrust. Now, this is, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of reducing, we're talking about slavery as if it's a monolithic institution, as if it's the same everywhere and anywhere. Of course, it's nuanced. So slavery as practiced in Africa will be different than slavery as practiced in the Americas. And to that end, slavery even within the U.S., sl the practice of slavery by, from plantation to plantation will differ. And the practice of slavery in the U.S. will differ than the practice of slavery in Brazil or, say, Jamaica. And actually, we, know, we can see stark differences in mortality statistics, which suggests there are severe difference in it, is differences in how it's practiced between these places. And within Africa as well, there's huge variation in how slavery is practiced between the relative uh, kingdoms. 
But what we're really going to, what we're going to say is, okay, slavery is the owning of another human being. Again, the specifics of that practice will differ from pl across place and across time. Now, as practiced in Africa during this time period, essentially you have a demand for slaves coming from Europe and then these various kingdoms filling that, that demand by selling their own slaves or capturing slaves you know, from the interior or you know, even individuals, as we mentioned, kind of selling relatives into slavery. So it's a wide variety of, of ways uh, an African could find themselves uh, enslaved. Here we have some data uh, from the census. That's and so many are most are kidnapped or seized. Some are taken as like war prisoners, prisoners of war. Some are sold or tricked by a friend into slavery, and then some are through a judicial process. Essentially, you are sentenced to slavery. So what Nunn does, this is a really a uh, Herculean effort. He constructs data on where all these slaves came from. So he essentially gathers a bunch of New World sources, sources from the Americas that has shipping records of, you know, these slave ships would come in, have a list of slaves, based on the names of the slaves, he'll, he's gonna match them up to where uh, they came from. And so this is what he finds. So this is actually gonna be important in the next paper. So this is Africa as divided essentially by ethnic group. So, you know, I mean, maybe not all of us, but, you know, certainly historical, historically kind of Africa has been treated as, you know, kind of like one place. Like, oh, everyone's here is African. It's pretty similar. Now, obviously, that's a simplistic way of looking at it. There are many, many different ethnic groups within Africa. Um, and within the same country, there are many different ethnic groups that see themselves as wholly different from one another. And so this map essentially breaks Africa up into all those different uh, ethnic groups. And what we can see is some of them are more affected by the slave trade here um, than others. Many are untouched by the slave trade. Essentially, they're far enough from the coast away uh, uh, from the Atlantic, sorry, the Atlantic slave, slave trade that they are unaffected by the Atlantic slave trade and other groups are more uh, affected. So a bit about what happens here too, is it's often actually the most developed African states, um, the ones with the you know, highest level of economic development that are actually involved in, this, in the slave trade, since they have like the most functioning ports and it's easiest for the Europeans to go there and buy slaves. Um, so many of these ethnic groups were the richest in their time period, the ones that were more likely to participate in the slave trade. Okay. And so this is the naive relationship. So how did the slave trade affect present day African development? Well, there's a, there's a negative effect. So these areas that were heavily involved in the slave trade. Oh, so what he does after, so after he divides a Africa into these ethnic groups, he's able to scale these up into countries. So he's able to come up with a number by country of, you know, how affected they were by uh, the slave trade. Okay. And so what you can see is these countries over here that were much more affected by the slave trade are poorer than these countries over here. Um, but the causal effect is, so there's a negative effect of the slave trade on growth, but none is saying this affects probably even larger because these places initially were much richer than these places. So for them to end up poor, they really had to fall far because they started out as the richest places uh, in Africa. So this had a hugely negative effect on African uh, development, the slave trade did. Okay, and this essentially shows this, that, that areas that participated in the slave trade were, were the most developed uh, in their time period. Okay, so the key, as I explained earlier, kind of going into detail how the slave trade worked, where the slaves came from, this, accord, this according to Nunn, is really the story of how this institution uh, that is abolished, how it persists, because it leads to all these negative outcomes. So there's ethnic fractionalization, which is an ethnic group splitting into subgroups, essentially because of the slave trade, because this, this village raised the other village for slaves. So now there is um, 
your animosity between those groups. And so if they were one ethnic group before, they may split into splinter into more ethnic groups. So your ethnic groups get fractionalized. It hinders state development. This is a bit like the resource curse. So your large civilizations all of a sudden are making money off the slave trade. So they kind of pivot their economy towards uh, the slave trade, which is an extractive industry, um, which will hinder state development and kind of hinder, hinder economic development. Also, if you're just losing a large number of people, that will hinder development uh, in general. Then you're going to create this environment of mistrust. If people are being tricked or there are raids taking people and then selling them into slavery, this is going to create an environment of uh, mistrust. And for Nathan Nunn, this is how we get this long-run negative effect of the slave trade on development in, uh, in Africa. All right. So here we have the ethnic fractionalization. We can see where there are more, uh, where there's more, uh, where there's more slaves taken. We have higher, uh, higher ethnic fractionalization in the present. Um, here we have where there are more slaves taken. We have less state development. And then here's the regression results for trust. Groups that are subject. So this is basically looking at looking within ethnic groups in Africa in the present. So if you're a member of an ethnic group that was subject to a large number of slave exports, so many of your ethnic group were taken into slavery, you have much lower levels of trust of your relatives, neighbors, local council, um, and then an intra and intergroup trust. So this is all negative correlations here. The more your group was subject to the slave trade, the lower levels of trust. And trust is really important for development because you need trust to facilitate trade and uh, markets. And then really here is the punchline of the paper. Here you have your low slave export countries. They've seen relatively strong development throughout the 20th century. Back half of the 20th century, there's virtually no development in your high slave export uh, countries, okay? And again, according to Nunn, these are the perspective uh, channels, or he's suggesting these are the uh, channels. Okay, so that is Nathan Nunn's super famous work on, uh, on the long run effects of the slave trade in Africa.